before getting into in action, I would like to talk about the criteria being a contest chair. I suggest that to be a contest chair, you must at least have the experience to be a contest chair for the on-ground speech contest. Otherwise, you will have two challenges. You will have the challenge to be a contest chair. At the same time, you will have a challenge to learn how to conduct an online contest online. Let's get into action. To be a contest chair, you must know your main duties. And these five are your main duty as a contest chair. As a contest chair, you must come up with your master plan. That means what you want to do, what you want to tell your webmaster, what you want your webmaster to design. The webmaster will have to design the online meeting based on your master plan. Same to the on-ground speech contest. You need to have your role players, your chief judge, and you also need to prepare the trophies and certificates electronically. And physically, I strongly suggest that we will still give the winner the physical trophies. We can give the physical trophies later, but we can create the e-trophy and certificate on the winner announcement slides. Let's begin with master plan. The contest master plan should be the same as the on-ground contest. As I have explained this in the, the previous video, I don't want to get into the detail here because there's no implementation at this point. Remember, this video focus on implementation. Of course, you might think that you need to create a master plan. Well, you can take this as a model to begin with. If you need to modify, go ahead to modify this master plan. Let's get into the thought of line for all this information that need to be collected. First of all, I designed these three questions because I think it is absolutely important to know where you stand as a role player. If you are the first time, we probably need to provide you a training. If you have not seen an online contest before, that tells me that you probably have a hard time to even visualize. I am probably need to provide you a video. If you are not comfortable with online operation, this one probably we should consider changing the role player because to save time and effort, you really want to have a role player who is comfortable with online operation. Judging team. This Q1, Q2, and Q3 is the answer of these questions. You should just put Y and N, yes or no. A simple answer. We need this Zoom email. As a role player, if you do not have a Zoom email, email please immediately register one because we need this zoom email to do pre-assignment for the breakout room it will save the zoom master a lot of time same as to the contestants we need the zoom email same to all the role players here ctm timer saa bell account every role player need to provide a zoom email this is a duty the responsibility of a contest chair to provide this information to the Zoom master and the participant management. The Zoom master is the one who designed the system to meet your requirement, your management, your plan. But it is the contest chair who come out with the plan. This is an example of the plan. You may use it as a model and you can also modify it according to your needs. The critical part of the implementation is as the contest chair, it is your responsibility to inform every participant to rename themselves accordingly before signing in. The flow management should be designed by the Zoom master. After you have provided that master plan to the Zoom master. However, as the contest chair, you need to try to understand all that is going on. I will talk about the detail of this flow management in the video, how to be a Zoom master. Again, this smooth transition within role player. This plan should be created by 
the Zoom master. Nonetheless, as a contest chair, you need to know what needs to happen so that you can ask the Zoom master show you this plan. This is the operation plan of the Zoom master. As a contest chair, it is important to make sure every rule knows how to function on the online contest. If you are a new contest chair. You need to watch this video to understand how every role works. Because as a contest chair, you need to know how things work and so that you can make sure things works the way it is. As the chief judge, everything should be the same as the on-ground speech contest. The key difference is the e-ballot counting. The chief judge need to have an e-ballot counting in order to facilitate the ballot counting process online. One important point I need to stress is, according to the design of my winner's announcement, we will put the picture the photo of the winner on the winner announcement slides. Therefore, the contest toastmaster need to get the permission from the chief judge to provide them the contest result as soon as he or she has it so that the contest toastmaster has the time to put the photos on the winner announcement slide. The results can just text to the contest toastmaster via WhatsApp or any electronic devices. But the actual forms, the result forms, and the notification of winner's form should be officially given it to the contest toastmaster during the time of winner announcement. When the contest toastmaster invite the chief judge to give the result. Otherwise, everything else should be the same. The voting judges still do their ballot on the physical form and sign it, same as the tiebreaker. Of course, for the online contest, we always emphasize on the backup communication. And WhatsApp is one of the best tools for backup. I have created ballot counting process using Google Form. It is very simple and straightforward. If you would like to use it, just visit my YouTube and this is the link. Last but not least, despite how good you prepare and you think everything is okay, it is still necessary to have a pre-run before the contest. Strongly recommended. This is the end of this video. How to be a contest chair. I hope you are very clear on every step now. I wish you enjoy your journey to be a contest chair and I'm sure you will be a great contest chair.